Hi guys, this is Sadiq from Dwarden.com and in this video, we will show you how to flash the latest Nusantara ROM based on Android 13 onto your Poco F4. So please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's get started. First off, you have to install Android SDK platform tools. This is the official ADB binary given by Google and is required to execute ADB command. So download it from the link given in my guide and extract them onto your PC. In my case, I have done the extraction in eDrive. You could extract them anywhere you want. Once that is done, you have to enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to execute ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the bootloader on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, go to the settings menu, then go to about phone, and then you have to tap on MIUI version seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. So as you could see, so now go back, then go back, go to additional settings. From here, you have to go to developer option, and now enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will now get a prompt. So check mark, I am aware of all the risk and then you will have to wait for 10 seconds. So let's wait for the time frame and then you have to tap on OK. So with this debugging is now enabled, you might get an RSA key fingerprint prompt. Tap on OK. So let's now verify the debugging connection. So go to the platform tools folder, type in CMD in the address bar and hit enter. This will launch the command prompt window inside platform tools folder as you could see. Now type in ADB devices and make sure you're getting a serial ID. So let me show you, type in ADB devices and hit enter. And make sure you're getting an ID over here. If you're not getting an ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC, disable and re-enable USB debugging, tap on revoke USB debugging, use the optional USB cable that came with your phone, and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out these USB tweaks and make sure you're getting a serial ID. Once you're getting this ID, your next possible action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do keep in mind that doing so will wipe off all the data and it might nullify the warranty as well. So if that's well and good, then you could refer to a guide and the video as well and unlock the bootloader using the official Me Unlock tool. Once you have done that, you will get an unlock successful message and with this you could now move ahead. So next up, you now have to download the Nusantara ROM for your Poké F4. I've given the link, so let me show you. This is the source of that. Uh, from here, you have to then scroll down. This is a month for a Poké F4. So scroll down, go to the file section. And from here, you could now download the latest Nusantara ROM. It has the, this is the G app build which I am using. The vanilla build will not have G apps and the G app build will have the Google app packages. You could use any of these two builds. I am using the G app packages. So download the ROM and once you have done the download, please transfer the ROM to the platform tools folder. So let me show you. This is the ROM inside the platform tools folder, Nusantara ROM. And for the ease of convenience, let's rename the ROM to something shorter. So let's just rename it to ROM. The complete name becomes ROM.zip. It will not be easier to type in the CMD window. So make sure you have the ROM placed inside the platform tools folder and its name is ROM.zip. Once that is done, let's now move to the next step. So you now have to install the PWRP recovery onto your phone as well. So let me show you how that could be done. So I have made a separate guide in the video, but let me show you once again. So first off, you have to download the recovery from the official website. So download the recovery from here. And once you've done the download, you only need the IMG file. You don't need the zip file. So let me show you, just go to this website and only download the IMG file. Once you have done the download, place the file inside the platform tools folder. As you could see, this is the file and make sure to rename it to WRP. We have done the shorter rename because it will be easier to type in the same day window. So the complete name becomes TWRP.IMG. So with this, we have both the recovery and the ROM file inside the platform tools folder. Now that we have the recovery, let's now flash the recovery onto our phone. So for that, we have to boot your phone to the fast boot mode. So open Type in CMD in the address bar of platform tools folder and hit enter. This will launch the command form inside platform tools folder. Now type in ADB reboot bootloader and your phone should now go to the fast boot mode. We will also verify the same. So let's wait for a phone to boot to the fast boot mode and then we'll verify the process. So as you could see, this fast boot screen should just appear and then we are now in the fast boot mode. So let's now verify the fast boot connection. For that, you have to type in fast boot devices and hit enter. Make sure you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then you will have to install fastboot drivers. I made a guide and the video on the same. You could refer to my guide and the video and make sure to install these fastboot drivers onto your PC. You could also verify the fastboot drivers from here as well. So use the Windows X shortcut keys and choose device manager. After that, you have to expand the Android phone section and make sure your phone is being shown as Android bootloader interface. So as you could see, Android bootloader interface, this signifies that a PC is able to read our phone in fastboot mode. So let's now proceed ahead. Next up, since our Poco F4 does not have a recovery partition, so we will first temporarily boot the file using fastboot 
boot and name of the recovery file which is twrp.img. So our phone will not boot to the twrp recovery and it will only take a few seconds. As of now, it's just a temporary boot. We will then make it permanent as well. So your phone will now automatically boot to the recovery. Let's wait for the time frame and then you can make the recovery permanent as well. So let me now show you how you could do that. So from the recovery file, you just have to go to the advanced section, then select flash current WRP. Now perform a right swipe and the recovery will now be permanently flashed onto your partition. So it will only take a few seconds. So let's wait for the time frame for the recovery to be flashed. And once the recovery has been flashed, we will then flash the ROM as well. So let's wait for that time frame. And as you could see, the image flash has been completed and it will now only take a few seconds for the flash to get over. So as you could see, the flashing is now done. You will now have to reboot your phone to the recovery mode just to verify that the recovery has been installed successfully. So tap on reboot and select recovery and our phone should now boot to the AWRP recovery. So you could also refer to my guide on how to install this recovery. I also made a video. You could refer to my video or the guide. If you have any queries, so as of now, you could see my phone is now booted to AWRP recovery. So with this, the recovery has been installed permanently and you could now move on to the next step. So next step, you now have to install the ROM. But before that, you have to do a format data. Do note that this will wipe off all the data from your phone. So make sure you have taken a backup beforehand. Once that is done, go to wipe, then tap on format data, type in yes, and hit the blue check mark. And with this, the format data will now begin. And as you could see, the format has been now done. So we will now have to transfer the file onto our phone. So for that, we could opt for quite a few methods. So let me show you. The easiest is if the phone is visible here, you could directly transfer the ROM file onto your phone from here itself. So in my case, let me check out. So I cannot access the phone now, even though my phone is being listed here, there is no internal storage. So you cannot access this way. So your next course of action should be to transfer the file using ADB push. Let me show you that as well. So go to the platform push folder and make sure that the ROM file is placed here. Now open CMD window inside here. You have to type in ADB push followed by the file name, which is our case is ROM.zip space forward slash and the location of our phone which is SD card which signifies internal storage. So this is the command adb push na name of the file which in our case rom.zip and the location. So type in this command and hit enter and the rom is now started transferring onto our phone and it will only take a few seconds. So if your phone is being visible then you could also use the mount but in my case the phone was visible but the storage was not shown there. So the next best approach was to use the adb push. If you have an OTG device you could also use an OTG device but for that you have to mount that USB OTG and then only transfer the file. Please do not use that ADB side load while transferring the file because ADB side load would also flash the ROM but we do not want to flash the ROM by ADB side load. We will take the native approach of flashing the ROM via the install section. So do not use ever do not ever never use ADB side load to transfer the ROM. Either use the MTP mode or if your phone is not visible then use the ADB push. So with this, our ROM is now onto our phone. So now you could go to install. And from here, as you could see, the ROM is now transferred. Select the ROM and perform a right swipe to flash it. The flashing will now begin and it could take up to around 5 to 6 minutes. So let's wait for the time frame. The step 1 of 2 is going on. It will take most of the time. The step 2 of 2 is usually shorter and only take a few seconds. So let's wait for the ROM to be flashed and then we'll be back. So guys, as you could see, the flashing is now complete. And you could verify the same from the screen as well. Once that is done, I have flashed the build which already have GFs, so I don't need to flash GFs. If you have flashed that build which do not have GFs, and if you want to flash GFs now, then you could do so right now, or else let's now boot our phone to the OS. So just tap on reboot and then select system. So our phone should now boot to the OS. So keep in mind that the first boot up might take up a few additional seconds. That's completely normal. From the subsequent time, it will not take that much time. It's only the first time boot up that is taking that much long because our device and the gone reboot and as you could see this is the boot animation of the Santara ROM. I will also show you the UI UX of this ROM and some of the settings that this ROM behold. So let's wait for the ROM to boot up and the boot animation is definitely quite impressive and quite different from all the other AOSP ROM that we have flashed till now. So let's wait for the ROM to boot up and then I will show you the rest of the steps as well. As I have told you before the first boot up could take a few additional seconds. So please leave your phone in this state and let it boot from the subsequent boot up. It will not take that much longer. So with this, our phone is now booted. So let's skip the initial setup screen. Let me skip this as well for the time being. 
you could restore your data right now if you want currently i'm skipping all these stuffs because i want to show you the ui and ux of the phone so as you could see our phone is not booted to the os and this is the nusantara rom this is the quick setting toggle let's go to the settings menu and this is the settings menu of the rom as you could see this is completely different from what we have seen till date then let me show you some of the other features so you could go to the nusantara wings and from here you could see all this option the first is the game space regarding the gaming tweaks you could carry out from here then we have the themes there are quite a lot of themes for example if you go to the system theme and the pure black is a pitch black theme then the polarized theme is a blue theme i guess yeah this is quite good apart from that you could choose the clear theme which is a little bit transparent it might say as you could see it's showing the wallpaper so you could also change the blur style as well for the sake of convenience let's now and the dark usp is the same which you see across various usp rom as of now i'm going with the pure black so apart from that there is the icon shape that you could choose from so if you select cloudy and check out the as you could see the icons are not become cloudy then next up we have the wi-fi icon there are quite a few currently i'm not connected to wi-fi so i might not be able to show you but as you could see there are quite a few wi-fi icons then we have the signal icons as well you could select each of these signals and then check out the result there are quite a few signals and then we have the navigation bar style this i can show you right now so for the sake of reference let's select the android logo one and as you could see it has not been changed apart from that this is the themes then the next one is the notification you could customize the notification then we have the some miscellaneous tweaks type to screenshot this is working well and good and apart from that then comes the lock screen items you could customize the lock screen on then the fingerprint you could show the ripple effect or disable the ripple effect fingerprint authentication vibration then comes the battery options so in the battery there are some tweaks these are the battery style as you could see battery percentage inside the icon then battery bar you could also customize then we have the clock options this is the icon manager and you could tweak the icon from here then we have the quick settings you could uh, animate the quick setting when you are changing from one switch to another tab you could see this then we have the us footer text data usage brightness slider so there are quite a few tweaks then we have the traffic indicator of data transfer speed in mb and kb the last one is regarding the buttons and it's the navigation so let's use the system navigation as just navigation and there are a few other just navigation tweaks as you could see from here and we are running the latest android 13 build and the about is at the top itself as you could verify from here it's the latest android 13 so guys on that note i round out this video if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section and guys please like this video and subscribe to channel for more tips and tricks. Thanks a lot for watching.